Hello and welcome to the show that debates and deconstructs burning issues of the day. This is The Big Picture and I'm Athar Khan. Today we'll talk about the draft resolution on ideological issues that the Communist Party of India Marxist released recently. Just ahead of the party congress in Kerala, the document released by the party chief Prakash Karat seeks to bring greater ideological clarity in the wake of events around the world that have changed the dynamics of geopolitics in the last decade or so. After the 1968 Burdwan plenum and the 1992 resolution at the 14th Congress, the party had done the same in 2000 in the wake of dis the dismantling of, the socialis of socialism in the former Soviet Union and Eastern European countries that led to updating of the party program. The draft would be taken up for discussion and adoption at the April Congress in Kodikod. Interestingly, the official party line as outlined by Politburo member Sidara Mechuri is that the CPM will not try and emulate China, Latin America or any other country in its pursuit of establishing socialism in India, but will draw important lessons from the developments there and in other nations like Vietnam or even North Korea. The document further talks about combining parliamentary and extra-parliamentary forms of struggle with neglecting or negating the role of either form. The draft also flags issues like caste-based political mobilization, communalism, gender and regional and ethnic identities. Tonight on The Big Picture, we'll discuss the document, the future of socialism in India, as well as the possibility of the left in India easing into a more European social democratic model of politics. Joining me in the studio is senior CPM leader Nilutpal Basu. Uh, we also have uh, CP John, member Kerala Planning Board. Uh, we are also joined by Mridla Mukherjee, who teaches at JNU, and also joining us on the program is my colleague Girish Nikam. But I'd like to start the show uh, with uh, Mr. Basu, if I could. Uh, two decades after the fall of the Soviet bloc, uh, the CPI, according to the document, will strive to revitalize uh, um, the, the socialism as a system in the 21st century. Now, would you agree that is a tacit admission, as some people would like to believe, uh, of uh, the debacle, if I want to use that word, of socialism? Uh, is the root cause of that debacle is the inadequacy of the system. Do you agree? You see, first of all, uh, we have undertaken this exercise in a context uh, where uh, there is a worldwide uh, regeneration of uh, interest about Marxism. And uh, we are uh, absolutely not apologetic about uh, the word you were using. I think. Uh, even before you have used, we have used that word. But we think that uh, things needed to be clarified because the birth of our party has been uh, uh, punctuated with uh, opposition from uh, major uh, communist parties of uh, the then times, the uh, Communist Party of Soviet Union and the Chinese Communist Party, precisely because what we have now uh, spelt out very explicitly that uh, so far as the Indian situation is concerned, it is for the Indian communists to do so. So we don't believe in models, but uh, nevertheless, people kept on harping on that. So we think that we have defined what uh, is socialism with Indian characteristics. Right. And we have also pointed out, as you have also uh, hinted, that uh, this socialism has, uh, cannot replicate the mistakes of the 20th century socialism. Right, right. So right. it has to be 21st century socialism. Before I, before socialism. I come to Girish. And I'm... just one sentence that we are undertaking this exercise after two decades and now we are much more reinforced. In 1992, when we uh, vehemently opposed uh, that this cannot be the end of history, capitalism, uh, many people laughed at us, even scorned. But uh, I think now there are more people in Western Europe and Northern America who are saying what is the future of capitalism. Right, right, right. Let's get an independent view on this. Let me come to Girish first, then I'll come to Mr. John. Do you agree with what uh, Nuspal Basu said? Do you agree that the inadequacy of the system uh, is what uh, is, is a tacit admission, this resolution is a tacit admission that the system actually failed? Yes, absolutely. You see, as Nilotpal himself said that, you know, <clears throat> they themselves have accepted the fact that they have failed. The, the 28th century format and formula doesn't work. The 21st century is a new century. New things have happened. There are, this, this paper is very interesting because, you know, it, it, it analyzes liberal imperialism, globalization, neoliberalism. The hegemony people, of imperialism. Some people, may, some people may agree with it. Some people may not agree with it. But the fact is it is worth reading. The, but there are several issues which are involved in this. The CPIM as a party, it's, it's good that they've started un recognizing the fact that there's something had gone wrong and now they've finally come, to, come down to the table. They've come out with a paper. There are, it, this is not an adequate thing. This is a draft resolution, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
there are going to be more uh, changes which, which are going to, going to right, happen. Right, right. But I think they have started the process. But I don't think the the ideal the ideological resolution doesn't talk of strategies right. because ultimately for 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 the left parties to survive in this country, they, they have to develop strategies which can make them spread across the country. Right, right. And those strategies are not visible right. here. Let me, let me I don't expect it to happen here, but you know, it will be very interesting to find out what kind of strategy they'll adopt in the future. Maybe it's a start. Maybe this is a starting point. Mr. John, when we come to your first thoughts on the resolution, uh, and you heard what Nilot Bala and Grish had to say. Your thoughts? See, unfortunately, the concept of Indian revolution, as far as the communist movement of India is concerned, has been a model-dependent one. In one on one model or on another model, uh, the communist movement dependent on either on the Russian model, the communist model, now talking about the Latin American model. Maybe China now as well. Uh, yes, Ch Chinese model, of course. And the most unfortunate thing is that still we are not able to emerge an Indian model. Mm. Still the communist movement, the major communist movement in India, CPIM, mm. is searching for a model. My contention is that we need not look for a model, we have to create a model. Mm. That is the main problem. Right. And what is the stumbling block? The main point is we, communist movement in India is not yet very clear about the characteristic of Indian independence movement. See, as far as China is concerned. Do you think it goes that far back? We, the yes, we have, have to go. We have to go. Hmm. The point is both the Indian independence and Chinese revolution are similar. China, after 30 years, they didn't go back. They started a new in 1978. And they formulated a new concept of Chinese characteristic of socialism. Mm. An interesting point in this ideological resolution is that right from 64, even if China was opposing CPM during 67 to 74, the, for the first time, the CPM is finding clear faults of Chinese Communist Party Absolutely. in this ideological resolution. Right, right, right. So this resolution is a complete break from the past as far as CPIM is concerned. Right, like you said, a new beginning. Let me come it's to a new uh, beginning in the sense that they are more confused in the sense that how the one side they are saying that China is progressing, at the same time they are saying them. that China is in the problem. Sometimes in the resolution they clearly stated that Chinese revolution may fall down. Right, right, right. Let me just interrupt you for a second. Let me go to Mridla, give her a first word. Is the left taking the right turn? Is the it? right turn <laughs> with this resolution. <laughs> No, it's not a right. <laughs> no, I think that would be simplistic uh, uh, but your formulation to say that they're taking a right turn. Mm. If you mean it in the sense the of pun, moving the, to the right. No, the, the pun was on the word the right. <laughs> yes, I do. So they are taking a correct turn, yeah. if right that as, is what right, you... <laughs> right as in correct. Yeah. Right correct. as in correct. That's what I meant, yeah. Yes, uh, I, right I would say yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, the limited time that I had to go through the resolution uh, I, there, there are various aspects in it which impressed me greatly. One, of course, I think it's, uh, you know, given the kind of thing that you're inundated with all the time now in Indian politics, uh, your daily <coughs> TV dose and all you read in the newspapers, it's quite refreshing to see that a political party thinks it is worthwhile to sit down and actually do what is really an academic paper on the situation <coughs> in the world and trying to locate your country within it. I think that tradition, that rigorous tradition of study and analysis, which is a strong Marxist tradition, but I think even uh, in India, in our national movement, the tradition of Dadabhai Naroji and Rana Day, where you studied the actual uh, situation, you know, right. in great detail and tried to then come to an understanding of what you need to do. I think it's firstly very gratifying that somebody is holding that up. I right. don't think that any other party at the moment, apart from other communist right, right. Uh, parties, are actually doing this. And right, I think right. that itself is very salutary. Right, right. I also think that there are important breakthroughs, which we can discuss as we go along. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that point, I saw the pointer to the Latin American what is happening in the Latin American situation, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the pointing to the way democratically elected left and left coalition, coalition governments, governments have okay. come to power and how they are breaking from the neoliberal 
more uh, model. Yeah. So in t I think there's a, there's, there's a direction that's being shown mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. I, I think this document has to be read carefully right, right, for right. what it says and also for what it implies. Right. We'll have you to know, take a short, in Marxist... Uh, let me interrupt you. We'll have to take yeah. a short break. We'll continue the discussion. Hold that thought. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to talk about. We'll talk about the nitty gritty of the resolution after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture. Nilutpalda, if I could come to you, a double header coming your way. <coughs> the document talks about combining parliamentary and extra parliamentary forms of struggle. Now, give us a sense of what that means in real terms. How is that going to be different from what the Communist Party of India, Marxist, has done in the past? Also, uh, the document clearly said uh, you, you're not going to try and emulate China. But does that also mean that even though China successfully meshed a communist model with a dash of capitalist policy thrown in, that is something that the CPI am still averse to in India? No, I think uh, it will be unfair to say that uh, the Chinese combine unabashed capitalism uh, with their socialist model. On the contrary, if you go through the document, you will find that we uh, have studied the Chinese question, essentially tracing from Lenin and what Lenin did during the uh, new economic policies. Uh, uh, we have quoted Lenin significantly when he says, a dash of state capitalism, if it is not there to transform a backward economy into a modern socialist uh, economy is well nigh impossible. So we build bridgeheads, but we have to be very careful because I mean, when we are opening that door, we uh, know some of the people who are coming in and maybe we do not know many of the people who are coming in. So while we have no other recourse but to open our doors, but at the same time, we have to be careful. And it is the Chinese also who seems to be echoing some of these thoughts. Mm. And uh, I found it very strange what John was saying because the criticism that is there about the Chinese performance, I mean, some of the aspects, the uh, uh, accentuation of inequality, uh, the growth of poverty in some of the areas. Social I think discourse. even Chinese party documents are harsher on themselves than actually we have put out. So it is not a negation of what they are doing, but we are exactly reproducing that Leninist uh, legacy. We are saying that, yes, what the Chinese are doing, this is fantastic. Right, right. Okay. In, in terms of the uh, managing the financial crisis, what they have done. I mean, you see, Europeans, Americans are going to Chinese and saying, please save us. Please save capitalism. Right, right. But at the same time, there are problems which uh, the Chinese themselves need to address. And uh, I, think, I, think, I think Girish wants to say. No, uh, we uh, see, but, uh, see, the fact of the matter is that in this paper, they're talking of actually inequalities, unemployment, and corruption in China. Hmm. You know, hmm. they have, the fact is they have recognized, as Mr. John also was pointing out, that for the first time probably they are critiquing the Chinese model also. But we, I think, you know, to take this discussion forward, you know, if we have to come back to the Indian situation, what this paper talks about as far as India is concerned, is that there are two, three issues which, which have been raised here. One is the fact of identity politics, which they talk about. Mm. And probably for the first time, I may be wrong, you know, these people may be able to correct me. They are recognizing the fact of caste in this country. And these are two issues which has, which traditionally crit crit critics of communist party even well wishers who are critics of communist party have said that they have not been able to understand the situation in this country the the fact of caste which i think they are trying to now understand but i don't know how successful will they will be in able to, in being able to understand and develop strategies to 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 you know see that they are able to bring these these issues in and and you know help the party grow. Right, right. Let me come back to Nilpal for very, very briefly. Then I'll come to you, uh, John. You you didn't answer my first question. Parliamentary and extra parliamentary. That's right. Give us a sense of what that means in real terms. That's right. For example, uh, we are uh, fighting for uh, proper food security legislation because uh, in recent past. Uh, food prices, generally prices and especially food prices has been one of the major issues. 
Now, why we, uh, while we will uh, 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 fight tooth and nail within the parliament by suggesting amendments, by pushing our idea uh, mm -hmm. inside the standing committee, for example, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. we would like to go out to the people, reach out to the people uh, in a big way and mobilize them, right. pressurizing right. the government. I don't, I don't, I don't, see, I don't think I don't think this is something new. I don't think there is something new. What these people, I mean, they, they have been doing this. I don't know how they will be able to do it better, considering the fact that they're they're a party which is shrinking, actually not growing. Right. right. Well, fair no, point. Fair point. One second, uh, Mr. John, I would like to ask you this. You can. Uh, Put in your injection uh, later as well. I'll ask you, some people think, and I was reading some edit pages in the morning, uh, and they said the document falls short of expectation that after the deba poll debacle in Kerala uh, and uh, in, in West Bengal, there'd be serious soul searching within the party and maybe, maybe uh, they would re-examine their ideological thinking. Do you think that has happened at all? It has not happened. The point is, uh, I, I shall explain. See, we were discussing, we are not discussing about the Chinese situation per se. We are trying to cope with our, so our resolution, our situation, using the experiences of China, what ex, uh, China taught the world. China really combined the capital and labor in a beautiful manner, mm -hmm. and it grew. They agree that point, but the point is whether we can do it or not. This is the contextuality of the problem. What we are thinking about our economy to grow, can we combine with the capitalist system of the West and our labor in this polity in this contextuality. Right, right. The point is, now they are saying that they used to say that China had a big uh, communist party the rule and the communist party per se, so they can do. Right. But now they are saying that even in the in the context of a, a big communist party, right. they are corrupt, they are losing uh, their, the grip. So the point is, as far as the Asian economies are concerned, mm -hmm. especially China and India, now they are criticizing Vietnam and Korea and uh, all other socialist countries. But they are also saying we will take Cuba. lessons from them. But the point is, what is the lesson we have to learn? The point is, as far as Asian con economies are concerned, we have to join the capital and the labor, mm -hmm. or the West capital and the East labor, mm -hmm. in a beautiful manner. Only then, Asia can grow, Asia right, has right, grown. Right, right. Uh, but how it will be applied in Indian conditions, right, number one. Point, number point. two, as, as you said, what is the extra parliamentary thing? This is a concealed arm struggle. This is not an agitation in front of parliament. This is a parliamentary thing. In any democratic country, you can hold a demonstration right, and agitation. Right, right, so point. this is not an agitation issue. You there. It's I'll, a revolutionary I have to issue. You there. I'm so sorry. the point is, they are still dreaming about revolution as right. an event. Point not taken, a process. Point taken. Point taken. I'll give a chance to Nirupal to respond. But before that, very quickly, I'll come to uh, Mridula. Uh, do you agree with that? There is no serious soul searching. The CPI, I am uh, in India at least, still explains socialism as a system where uh, um, uh, the state would be uh, led by the working class and the economy would be guided by central planning and obviously. Uh, dominated by, uh, by, by a socialist form of production. Has there been any serious soul searching after this document? Do you agree? No, I don't think that that is the issue that's uh, being debated in this document. As I see it, the document uh, essentially places uh, what is happening in the world in the 21st century. And the major focus is on uh, the globalization, what world capitalism, what is the new form in which we are seeing world capitalism, what are its specificities, how it is impacting uh, then the rest of the world, and in that China, India, and other countries are. I think perhaps we are expecting something which this document is not meant to do, which is to be a treatise on the strategy to be followed in Indian politics. Mm. And let me just say that as I read its implications for Indian politics, what I saw was a critique of identity politics. I saw a critique of communalism. I saw, therefore, a space for allying with left of center uh, political, uh, forces. political uh, forces. I did not see uh, a critique of what the Congress would, in a sense, broadly represent. But I did see a critique of BJP. I did see a critique of other identity-based, caste-based uh, right, right, parties. Right. So I think here we can derive hmm. somewhat what might be the actual political uh, right. positions that right. may be uh, taken. As far as I think the issue of the market economy and socialism is concerned, I think the document goes into fairly good detail and lets you know through its description and critique of the Chinese uh, model, model as to what, how they think globalization can occur and 
but if it is to be positive for the society, right. but what have to be the internal mechanisms within the country, right. as in China, right, right. which prevent the negative effects right. of that globalization. Right, right. And also, they very importantly talked about the salience of the nation state. Right, right. And uh, resistance. I just, uh, Girish, Girish, from I, that side. I just, come want, back to I just want to add a small little point, you know, if you see that do document. It's very interesting that for the first time, just one sentence, social ownership of the means of production under socialism cannot be mechanically equated with the state's own sector alone. This is a major, which I think now they're accepting the fact that it's so not just a... Right. right. Fair stuff. point, fair point. Okay. Fair point, all of you. And we'll give a chance to Nilutpal to respond, it, but that'll be after the break. I'll come to you straight after the break. We'll, have, we'll take another short break and we'll come back to Nilutpal Basu of the CPIM. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture. Let me come to Nirotpal Basu and give you a chance to respond to what Mr. John and Mridula had to say before the break. I think uh, what John is saying uh, is, is very strange in a way. I mean, uh, he is not reconciled with the uh, kind of questions that has come about to haunt capitalism itself. Uh, that is, uh, I think, what is needed more, mm -hmm. that in a country like India, I mean, the major difference uh, in the conditions in which we are trying to uh, have a revolution is uh, uh, far, far different from China. Chinese revolution took place in 1949 in uh, colonial, semi-colonial conditions. And we are talking of a revolution uh, in a uh, uh, fairly developed uh, uh, capitalist uh, uh, stage uh, and, and where uh, Indian capital, I mean, uh, by no stage of imagination, uh, I, I, are uh, uh, dependent in the sense it was in China. My question was, are you envisaging an so, event of yeah, revolution? Yes, you, yeah. I, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, these are certain, uh, I mean, jargons that he is using. So I think uh, uh, it's a process and it's a process in which we keep on mobilizing people, uh, elevating their consciousness to bring about that change. Does that hold so, so, far as the, so, so far as the model is concerned. It's very interesting I'm, that... I am saying, <laughs> so far as the uh, so far as the model is concerned, that you see, unfortunately, we are most uh, underread and uh, misunderstood lot because we have brought those changes in 1992 itself Girish, when critiquing Girish, the no, no, Soviet, no, no, Soviet, Soviet model. No, no, we said, uh, Girish, just a minute. We we uh, we accepted that it has to be a combination of plan and market. So what, what, what will be the admixture is something which has to be decided on the study of the objective reality. And the third point up, is that in our party program itself, we are emphasizing a post-revolutionary India where the multi-party system will continue to be there. And uh, that is the biggest difference from uh, the situation. I just want to that. I, I, no, no, I, I'm, I just wanted to point out to the viewers that both Nilod Pal and John come from the same stock. So if he's uh, criticizing him for, you know, using jargons, you know, the same thing applies to both of them. So right, I, that, right, that's right. all I just wanted right, to right, right, make right. that clear. Let, let me come to Mridula. Independent opinion <laughs> okay. on what? No, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Independent opinion. And wrap it up for us. What does this resolution really mean for the left, especially the CPIM in India? Where are they going from here? You know, let me just say I've said, uh, I've already commented on what I think are some of the very strong points. Let me also say that as an academic, particularly, I found the critique of postmodernism extremely uh, well done and very important for us as intellectuals in the social sciences, because this is a major battle that we fight in our, uh, and this would be of great assistance uh, to us. So I'm very happy about that. Right. And let me share with you two or three disappointments. One, I would have been uh, happy to see uh, some uh, critical thinking of the whole uh, two-stage revolution, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that people's democratic revolution and then socialist, especially given what Nilot Paldar just said about the stage of uh, capitalism uh, in India. Secondly, I thought that the dismissal of social democracy 
was a bit too uh, sweeping. And mm. perhaps one needs to look a uh, little more carefully at what social democracy, it's uh, maybe in some countries it has gone completely uh, accepted the neoliberal position, mm. but in others it hasn't. And mm. I think there, uh, I, was, I was disappointed. And thirdly, though it, as I said, it may be unfair, but I, a greater analysis of the CPM's own experience in the Indian conditions incorporated into this of the Indian uh, right, right, situation right. Is, is something that I thought, but maybe that's some, uh, coming in some other places. Right, right. So very briefly, um, uh, uh, CP John, very briefly, if so you could wrap it up for us, very briefly. Please. This is the continuing confusion of about the space provided by the constitution in India. What is the space provided for the communists and all progressive forces in the constitution? We have big space to work in. But unfortunately, the Communist, Communist Party, especially CPM, is envisaging the event revolution, not the process revolution. Right, right, really, right. the 57 government was a very good answer as far as the country is concerned in Kerala. Mm -hmm. It intervened in the process and, and put a model of what can we do with the government. Right, right. And, and in 58, Amritsar Party Congress of CPI said we can have multi-party democracy in India. But unfortunately, of the split of this in CPI in 64, again, both the parties went astray, and still we are uh, talking about the revolution as an event. Right. So we are not clear about the revolution as a process. Right, right. Still yeah. we are talking about the extra-parliamentary right. thing. Mr. John, we are, out, are almost out of time, but before I go, I'd like to ask a quick question to Nurpal Basu. In the light of, uh, of this updated strategy, if I could call it, uh, would the CPI, it's a political question, mind you, uh, would the CPM be averse to, say, a, coali uh, a coalition at the centre with, say, uh, uh, a left of a centre party or a centre party, and what would that be based on if, if yes, for sure it won't be on ideological grounds. Would, would, would the CPI be averse Absolutely. to it? Absolutely. Hmm. I think uh, we have uh, clearly spelt out that area what uh, Professor Mukherjee was also referring hmm. to and you are also asking. In our draft political resolution, we will basically have three documents. Yes. One on ideology, one on the political situation and the other on the political organization which was... Uh, hmm referred to in the beginning by Girish. Right, uh, right. So this is a combination which we will work out and I assure Professor Mukherjee that there is enough of our own understanding, our, uh, our own crystallization of our own experiences right, 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 right. to really make it an right, integrated right. whole and of course we are opposed to BJP and we are opposed to the kind of policies that Congress is pursuing and we envisage of uh, some kind of a loose uh, 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 electoral, yeah, electoral yeah, yeah. adjustment. Fair point, with fair point. I have to end the show issues. now. We just, are all, just, we're out of time. I just Girish, want one word. Out of time. I, just want one, I just want one word. I, I hope that in the uh, April Congress, they will be able to tell us what their idea of caste and identity politics right, is. Right, because right, that is right. where, crucially, uh, the politics of India lies. Absolutely. Thank you, Girish. I, I must thank all my guests before we go. Midula Mukherjee, CP John, Nilotpal Basu. Uh, obviously, uh, lots of challenges for the left in the days to come, uh, and they have to cross all those challenges, get a clear idea what they want uh, to do in the next few years if they want to become the force they once were uh, in the politics of this country. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, until the next time, we get you another edition of The Big Picture. Thank you, and thanks for watching. Good night.